Hi everyone, Dr. Maxwell back with another video on how to use R packages for um, gender chronological analysis. Today I'm going to be talking about the trader package. The trader package um, allows you to look at growth release detection for ecological analyses. And today I'm going to be just demonstrating one technique, the Nowacki and Abrams technique that uses radial growth averaging. And you all can look at those publications uh, to determine which analysis method is going to be best for your data sets. So I'll start out again here. I'm in uh, RStudio, and I have a series of code here using the trader package. Um, you will need to first load in your libraries. Uh, if you don't have these, you want to make sure that you install those libraries so you can pull up functions for analysis. I'm going to set my working directory. And then I am going to read in my triggering data. Now, important point here, when you do growth um, uh, release detection, you are going to be using raw ring width data and actual millimeters measurements. Because if we detrend or standardize, we tend to remove uh, many of those growth responses to ecological um, types of perturbations. And so, we want to make sure that we are reading in an RWL file with raw data. And so here I'm going to read, use the read Tucson function and assign my data call, uh, a name called the data. It's a data frame. So we'll go ahead and read that in. And you'll see that it read it all in. And if we want to look at our data, um, this is just what it looks like in table format. Then uh, we want to typically kind of have a look at our data. I like to do what are called spaghetti plots, um, as well as just the raw ring with chronology, kind of the average growth for the site. And so the spaghetti plot, we can run that function uh, from DPLR. And uh, that creates something that I've shown you in previous videos um, where each of those lines is the, the raw ring with uh, growing over time for each of the tree cores. And I like to look at this because you can see some commonalities that may occur across the, the site and help you determine if there are internal disturbances and external disturbances, disturbances like endogenous or exogenous disturbances. And so this is a good first place to look to see if there's some commonality in um, growth releases or suppressions in your data set. Then we can, um, create a, a quick chronology of the raw data and make a plot of that. This can also be helpful to see um, how overall at your site, how the, the trees are changing in growth. But do note that when you have uh, large increases in growth for an entire site, this could also be due to the increase in sample size. And the increase in sample size indicates that you have new trees or younger trees coming into the stand that may have juvenile growth or large rings in the beginning uh, of their lives, and that will inflate the average. And then, of course, as we go back in time, we have fewer samples to calculate that average. But this is a good snapshot to kind of look at to see if there's any commonalities across your data set. Uh, but this would be one key reason why you would want to detrend and standardize your data so you wouldn't have these large um, growth releases uh, occurring from putting in a bunch of young trees into your average uh, chronology there. Now, there are several functions in the trader package. Uh, I use the uh, Nowacki and Abrams technique from the 1997 paper, I believe. And uh, this is a, a pretty straightforward approach where we are looking at uh, the raw ring with data and trying to calculate releases based off of average growth before in time one, and, uh, and, uh, and after in time two. And so we will have a target year, say the year 1900, and we can calculate the average growth kind of before that and after that, and assign a, a value to the percentage of growth release from one time period to the next. So I have this set up, and so it calculates um, 15 years before and 15 years after. Uh, and, and the 15 years before actually includes the year of uh, analysis of interest. Then um, if we do get a detection of a growth release, I don't want to keep on detecting growth releases year after year after year. 
And so I'm allowing for a 10 year buffer. And so there has to be a 10 year gap in between detecting of growth releases because it may be that the growth release that you keep on detecting year after year is the same one. So uh, allow for a little bit of a buffer and you can play with that. <clears throat> then you have to have set your criteria. Uh, we have two different criteria we can set. And this would be a, a minor growth release versus a major growth release. Um, and so you can read some of um, you know, Wacking Abrams work on this for closed canopy forest in the eastern United States. And, and my data set is from a closed canopy kind of oak hickory forest similar to theirs. So here, this would be a 25% increase would be identified as a minor growth release and a 50% release would be um, a major growth release. And you could set those to whatever you want for your site. Uh, you can change your prefix to whatever you want. Um, and then the length of those growth releases here, this growth release uh, to be identified as a growth release, it would have to go for five years. This way, um, if you have maybe a response to a, a, a good year or a bad year in climate, and that maybe lasts for a year or two uh, in affecting the tree ring width, that wouldn't be detected. Uh, we want events that may be a little bit longer in duration. And then we can store all of our uh, graphs as JPEGs. Now, so this is just one function that you can run. If you go to your packages tab and navigate down to um, the trader package, you can see in here, there are various functions that you could use um, and they're, they cite the publications in there. So the absolute increase method from Fravor and White 2005, uh, the boundary line method um, from Black and Abrams 2003. Uh, and there are a series of other functions in here that you could use to detect growth releases and suppressions. Uh, commonly people do use the Nowacki and Abrams technique. It's relatively easy to understand. You could program this uh, with some formulas in Excel. So let's go ahead and run this and talk about some of the results. So it is running a bunch of analysis in the background and it won't actually pop up anything. Uh, all of the results get written to your uh, working directory. So I'm gonna open up my working directory and walk you through some of the files. First off, you're gonna get a JPEG uh, written for each individual tree core. And so if we open this up, we can see the analysis for this individual tree core. Uh, we have the raw ring width is the black line. And this kind of light blue line is the running percent growth change. And so it's going to be calculating percent growth change for every year using that 15 years on each side of the year of interest. When it exceeds our threshold here, this is the 25% growth release threshold. It will flag that first year of growth release and indicate it here on the graph. And so this can be helpful for a quick visual to see uh, where your growth release on an individual tree ring series is occurring. Now, we don't wanna necessarily um, go and pull out each individual year uh, from each individual core, but this one is showing a growth release um, that is the minor growth release and a major growth release um, as indicated here. And it is uh, signaling that, that that is the year 1949. Now, um, we can look at this data and it creates a series of CSVs that we'll look at here in a second, but it does create um, a graph right here that compiles it all together. Now, in this graph, it is actually sourcing some of those CSV files that I just highlighted. And this is now showing the percent of trees with minor and major growth releases. And it is um, creating these stacked histograms for that indicating the number of trees um, uh, on this side shown that's sample depth and then the percent of growth releases is our actual bars. Now, it's easier to get 100% growth release um, or 25% growth release when you only have a few trees or a few cores in your sample. So you do need to understand that um, some of these numbers will change as a function of sample depth backwards in time. But as we increase sample size, we can see that we have some commonality here. Into the 1940s, um, we have a series of growth releases, both minor and major in nature, indicating that there might have been some going, uh, something going on in the forest stand there. And so we might want to investigate things like the land use history. Uh, were there ice storms or gypsy moth outbreaks in our stand? Other types of 
uh, events that may ca have caused disturbances like fire. And uh, we can also see here in probably the, like the late 1980s or so, uh, we have additional um, growth releases occurring in the stand. And so this is a good graph to, to display because you can have a quick snapshot of what's happening at the site. Now you can customize and tailor a lot of these by analyzing um, some of the major and moderate growth releases. And we can look at some of these data sets here to uh, create our own uh, um, growth release and suppression data if we want. And so this one in particular, this is showing each individual tree and it is showing the running percent growth release for each of these. Now, the plot functions only pull out the growth releases, so the positive growth, but we can also see in here that we have negative growth happening as well, and so suppressions. So you may choose to go into this file and look at the suppressions occurring in your stand as well instead of the growth releases. Those can also be informative. This is also broken down in, in different formats. Um, and so you can use these as you'd like, uh, as you see fit. This one shows just the areas where we have growth releases detected that are um, long enough in length um, set by the criteria. We can look at the major growth releases. And so that's the ones that only are gonna be showing um, the individual years that exceeded the 50% growth rate. And so that is just a binary did the year exceed the threshold or not? And so it does that for moderate and major. And then we can look at the, um, the total values uh, for those growth releases. So the percentage growth release in that given year of detection. And then finally, we have just a, a quick look a snapshot for each year that a growth release is detected, the number of trees growing during that time period, um, and the number of trees that are detecting it. Okay, and so now you could create customized types of plots based off of those output, but that's it. That was one line of code that created all of those files for us. Now, I encourage you to explore other types of techniques for your site, uh, but the Nowacking Abrams uh, 1997 uh, growth averaging technique is, is a good standby to start out with. All right, I hope this helps. Try it out with your own data set. And if you need help uh, reading this in, be sure to watch the video on creating a chronology in DPLR, and that will um, get you moving in the right direction. Uh, but at the very least, you need the RWL file to run this type of analysis. Okay, that's it for now. See you on the other side.